I set out to build an ultimate high-end gaming PC, but I ran into some serious issues along the way. Was I successful or did it turn into a nightmare build? In this video, we are going to find out. My name is Matt, I'm a former rocket scientist, and my goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. In this video, our focus will be on testing the ultimate ASUS ROG themed gaming PC that I built in the previous video. The first video focused on the build itself and the issues that I faced while putting it together. This second video will focus on benchmarking the PC and the issues that I faced while conducting the testing. As I mentioned in part one, I was able to uncover some solutions that led to a significant performance boost in games. So after what became weeks of building, testing, and replacing literally every component in the system, did it finally become the ultimate gaming PC that I set out to build? Stay tuned to find out. With the system built and running, it's now time to test it. As I mentioned in part one, anyone can build a PC, but not anyone can build an ultimate gaming machine. It's not just hardware, it's software. It's making the components all work together synergistically to deliver amazing performance. That's why testing is so important. One thing I've noticed with many tech YouTubers is that they build the PC, claim that it's the best and fastest gaming PC ever built and never test it. Some will show themselves playing a random game while being amazed at the in-game FPS getting around about 140 frames a second or so. Some will tell you that the benchmarks are coming in a later video. This video took way too long to make, but don't worry, those of you that subscribe to the channel, we will be pitting this thing against a 7800X3D in a future benchmark video. While others will simply build the PC without doing any testing at all. My strong advice is don't trust anyone that claims they built a great gaming PC without showing you the test data to prove it. For a baseline comparison, I decided to use my Intel test bench which consists of the following components. For the CPU, it has an Intel Core i9-14900K. For the motherboard, it has an ASUS ROG Strix Z790E Gaming Wi-Fi 2. For RAM, it has Team T-Force Delta RGB 32GB of DDR5-7200 at CL34. For the GPU, it has a Zotac GeForce RTX 4090 Amp Extreme Error. For the CPU cooler, it has an ASUS ROG Ryzen 2 360mm AIO. For storage, it's using a 2TB SK Hynix Platinum P41 NVMe Gen 4 M.2 SSD. And for the PSU, it has an EVGA Supernova 1200 P2 1200 Watt Platinum PSU. Affiliate links for all of these components are listed in the description below. For the Intel test bench, all testing was performed with the RTX 4090 at default clocks, the memory set to XMP1, and the extreme power delivery profile active in BIOS, per the new guidance from Intel. For the Ultimate Game, PC, all testing was performed with a heavy GPU overclock for the RTX 4090, the memory set to XMP1, and ASUS multi-core enhancement set to enabled remove all limits 90 degrees Celsius. For this round of testing, I added Steel Nomad, a new GPU benchmark and stress test from 3 d Mark. This benchmark incorporates many graphical enhancements and is roughly three times tougher to run for your PC than Time Spy, allowing you to really stress your GPU and make sure that it will be stable when gaming. With the system set up and ready to go, let's check the benchmarks and see if this build really is the ultimate gaming PC.
Based on the benchmarks, it would be reasonable to believe that the system performed as expected, crushing the 14900K base test bench across the entire suite of tests. The problem is these results mask a large issue that I had during testing and why it's so incredibly important to test your system before making claims about its performance. The issue I had was somewhat strange. When I first tested this system in games, the 1% lows were significantly lower than the baseline 14900K system, even though the average FPS was higher. For example, in Cyberpunk 2077, at a a resolution of 1080p, the 1% lows for the test bench were approximately 40% higher than for the gaming PC. Typically a result like this would point to an issue with your memory. So I ran Kahu, I disabled XMP, and I even changed memory modules. Unfortunately, nothing memory related seemed to impact the results. For such an expensive high-end system, it was incredibly disappointing to see results like these. And I knew I couldn't release a video until I figured out what the issue was. So I started troubleshooting. This took me down many rabbit holes and I spent countless hours reading Reddit posts and trying different different fixes in an attempt to figure out what the real issue was. Given how common these type of issues are when you build a PC, I thought it'd be valuable to walk you through my troubleshooting journey. My guess is that many of you may even have a similar issue without even realizing it. But don't worry, I will help you fix your system and avoid wasting considerable time chasing the wrong rabbit. The first thing I focused in on was hardware, thinking that my luck had finally run out and that this was a hardware related issue. So I immediately zeroed in on the GPU riser cable that I used. There are so many horror stories online from users that have had issues with riser cables that I thought this would be a good place to start. So I removed it, but unfortunately that didn't solve the issue. I then systematically changed out every main component in the system from the CPU to the SSDs, the PSU, and even the motherboard, which was extremely difficult to find given that they are no longer being produced by ASUS all to no avail. I then dug deeper and replaced the USB expansion hub. I tested the cables with my Dr. Power 3 tester and I even tried a different keyboard and mouse, but still no change. At this point, I had basically rebuilt the entire PC and I was getting the same lackluster performance that I did originally. I thought maybe it's just the game. So I tested other games, but the same behavior persisted. Excellent average FPS, but terrible 1% lows. With the hardware side of the build exhausted, I moved on to the software side. I started by reinstalling Windows. I reflexed the BIOS. I ran DDU and I reinstalled my GPU drivers. I thoroughly reviewed and disabled background services. I disabled my GPU overclock. I reinstalled the motherboard chipset drivers. And I even retested my memory stability with Kahu, all to no avail. I went down Reddit rabbit hole after Reddit rabbit hole, trying things like disabling the high precision event timer, C states, hyper threading, E cores, you name it, I tried it. But nothing I did seemed to work. I thought it might be the frame capture software CapFrameX that I was using, but that didn't change things. Things. I wasn't making progress and I was getting very frustrated. So I created a list and I systematically went through every component and corresponding piece of software in my system. I finally got to the fans and I found a Reddit post that talked about the performance impact of using Lian Li TL LCD fans. Finally, a breakthrough. For some reason, the TL LCD fans impact your performance when the screens show an image or a sensor readout. So I turned them off and I reran Cinebench. As you can see, there was a relatively small performance impact of around 3%. The problem is this helped with applications like Cinebench, but didn't fix the 1% lows in games. I was getting to the end of my list when I decided to start investigating ASUS Armory Crate, software that I was also using with my Intel test bench. I was running out of ideas, so I randomly went into AuraSync and changed the color selection from color cycle to static. I ran my benchmark, this time for Middle Earth Shadow of War, and bam, the 1% lows increased by around 50%. Finally, after weeks of testing, I had a real breakthrough. I was somewhat relieved, but it really didn't make much sense to me. Why would a color selection in AuraSync impact my performance by so much? So I repeated the change a few times and each time it came back with the same result. Not sure exactly why, but the color cycle color sync option was really killing my FPS in games. I thought I had finally discovered the root cause, so I started benchmark testing again, but this time with a static color selected. In the first game that I retested after making this change, Total War Warhammer 3, I still got terrible 1% low performance relative to my test bench. The game I had been testing Middle Earth Shadow of War was running much better, but unfortunately problems persisted in some other titles. Given the success I had earlier, I decided to go back into Armory Crate to see if there was anything else I could do. That's when I discovered an app listed under device called Game First. I turned it on, reran Warhammer 3, and bam, the stutters were gone and all of the lost performance was instantly recovered. I really wanted to understand what this app was doing to my PC, so I went into the game
game first settings and I switched every option on and off, reran the benchmarks and compared the results. It turns out the primary option that was driving the performance boost was switching the Windows power plan from balanced to game turbo. So I disabled game first and I tried changing the power plan manually in control panel. Interestingly, enabling game first still gave better results. When it runs, it lists two other optimizations. The first is called optimized network and the second is called speed up application. I'm not sure exactly what they do, but apparently they help. What I also found interesting is that on AMD systems, the game first app doesn't appear in Armory Crate and the game turbo high performance power plan that it enables doesn't exist in Windows. So this must be a Windows optimization for Intel based systems only. So after what became a very long troubleshooting battle that included replacing every main component in my build, it all came down to Asus Armory Crate. Perhaps I really shouldn't be surprised. What's interesting to me is that I wasn't able to find these issues and or fixes mentioned anywhere online. And I think that's because most people don't really track their 1% lows. There were lots of posts trashing Armory Crate and Game First, but no mention of Aura Sync lighting options impacting your performance in any significant way or any discussion on the performance benefit of using Game First. I know this was a lot to cover, but hopefully it helps you in your future builds. In today's video, we saw just how important it is to test your new PC after you build it. In the end, I was able to create a gaming PC with truly breathtaking performance, but it certainly wasn't an easy journey. Without the test bench as a baseline, I would never have known that an issue even existed. At this stage, you may be asking yourself how much this ultimate gaming system cost and if it's really worth it. When you compare the primary components, the ultimate gaming PC is a whopping $2,440 more expensive than the test bench. Now convert that into gaming efficiency or FPS per dollar at 1080p, then it's not even close, with the test bench offering significantly more value in gaming. Keep in mind that some of the components I used to build this PC are no longer readily available. So if you buy them on eBay, expect your cost to go up significantly. These results help to reinforce the fact that you will pay disproportionately more to get ultimate levels of performance. But when you want the very best, it often doesn't make sense. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on my next Ultimate Gaming PC that will be based around the AMD 7950X3D CPU and MSI X670E Godlike motherboard. I can't wait to see how it compares with this system. Remember, it's not rocket science, it's Lego. My goal is to help you make the right component choices and put them together the right way every single time. Thank you for watching this video in the Golden Sample Builds Expert Build Series. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button and subscribe so you don't miss out on future episodes. And if you would like to support the channel further, please also consider joining our new membership program. Please also comment and offer suggestions on any future systems you would like to see me build. Bye for now.